Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you how I built my PVM interface from scratch as part of my series of beginner PVM guides. So building an interface is really confusing as it will take time. However, the time investment is worth it because many good PVMers have good custom interfaces. What I'm going to show you in this video are the most important basic components to include in an interface. My criteria on what makes a good interface is A, it's readable and easy to navigate, B, it contains the most important windows you need for PVMing, C, you have free space so that you can add other sections when needed, and finally D, the screen is big enough for you to see what the boss is doing, alongside clicking around the boss fight for when you need to deal with certain mechanics. Here is what my personal interface looks like, and it's actually really unique because I play on 1600 by 900 resolution, unlike many people who would play on 1080p. Do note that it is not the best PVM interface out there, so I recommend that you use this as a guideline, and feel free to adjust for whatever personal preferences you want. To kick things off, I suggest you save a copy of your previous interface first. What you'll do is press escape, then edit layout mode, and save as custom 1, or whatever custom you want this to be. As it will take a while to get used to the new interface, having a backup copy means you can always go back to the previous one if you don't like this new one. Now, I'm going to make an exact near replica copy of my new interface from scratch, using the RS3 default interface. I will do this by working on one section at a time. Before we start moving things around, here are the settings I recommend. Since there are so many settings which makes this really confusing for beginners, here are the most important list of settings you want to set up. First we have the appearance tab, and I'm going to tick box slim headers, as well as high title bars when locked. Then we have the attack options, and I would suggest hiding familiar options and hiding the dual options with players. And finally, for the camera mode, it really depends on your personal preference, but I personally like Freedom Classic. You also want to disable the camera shake because it can sometimes be a little annoying. The next settings we want to get into are the ribbon setup. You'll go to your settings and then hit the ribbon tab. This is what to keep and what not to keep. Before you do anything, please take a screenshot of your current ribbon setup. After you've done so, I'm going to hit clear all button. Also, make sure you checkbox the Use Custom Ribbon. As shown on screen, I'm going to click on the following action window icons in your ribbon setup so that you can add this in. This is used to build the interface windows. And this brings me to my next section, the interface windows themselves. The purpose is to organize them as they will take up a noticeable portion of your interface. First of all, make sure your customization is not locked or else you can't drag windows. L is the default keybind for this. What I'll do right now is make a group of windows for each section. This is rather hard to explain in words, so you're gonna have to watch. If you can't find the window, click the icon from the ribbon setup and it will open this. First, I have the inventory, which is completely by itself. Group A is for the following. Melee abilities, range abilities, magic abilities, HP abilities, and finally the bossing grouping system itself. Then we have group B, and these are the following windows I would include. Equipment, prayers, skills, friend list, friend chat, and clan chat. Now obviously they're not going to end up in the middle of the screen, because I'm only here to show you which windows go in which group. And this brings me to my next section, the window placements. I will place them into their approximate positions, which you can adjust the size later. First, I will start by placing the minimap on the top right corner. Then, underneath the minimap, I would place window group B. After this, you want to place window group A underneath window group B. You then want to align the length of window group A and B to the minimap. And finally, you want to place the inventory right beside window group A which is specifically in a 7x4 formation. The next section I'll get into are the action bars. Many PVMers have at least 3 additional action bars. In order to enable this, what you do is go to settings, then display additional action bars, and select whatever action bar numbers you desire. 
Personally, for the additional action bars, I like to use 10, 11, and 12. You'll notice that sometimes additional action bars are invisible, and if that's the case, just hit escape, then hit the edit layout mode button and select advanced options, and simply just close it without saving any settings or doing whatever else. When you have at least 3 secondary action bars on screen, move the main action bar approximately to the middle. You will now stack 3 additional action bars underneath in the secondary order of secondary action bar number 1, secondary action bar number 2, and finally secondary action bar number 3. You should then place the action bar stack right beside the inventory. As you can see, it is a little bit hard to drag action bars so you're gonna have to be a little patient. Unfortunately, because the default chat window is a little too large, you won't have much room so in this case, make it a little bit smaller to make room for the action bars to stack together and place them somewhere in the middle. Now that you have most of the key interfaces open, let's tidy them up and arrange them nicely. The key is to make it so that the inventory has its own 7x4 window and there's no scroll bar inside that 7x4 window. Now this part's a little tricky and even for me, I had trouble understanding this when I first built this interface. You notice how sometimes your inventory has a scroll bar when it's not locked, while locking it on the other hand, it would remove the scroll bar, right? Well that's because locking removes the title bar and header, which gives more room for these inventory slots. So what really matters is if you lock the interface yet you still see the scroll bar, it means you didn't drag the inventory box large enough. Now you don't want to make the inventory too large or else you'd have to shrink either your chat box or the right side of the supporting windows just to make room for this. However, you don't need to worry too much about this if you're using the full 1080p resolution as you got more room to work with. When this section's complete, the chat box, action bar, and inventory's height should all be aligned when the interface is locked. Closable side interfaces. What I'm gonna do right now is drag the clock to somewhere else, and I know in this video I dragged in a bad spot, so don't make the same mistake. Of course, don't forget to unlock the interface or else you cannot drag. You'll now drag the management window to the top left corner, this time making it 5 by one since all your other ribbon windows are clickable from their respective group, you can clear all the window icons. Now add back the bossing group window icon and 4 other icons to open windows that I haven't previously displayed. These are basically additional windows you want to display temporarily sometimes. Afterwards, drag the bossing team's group window out from window group A and place it on the top left right underneath the ribbon. When clicking all 5 ribbon icons to open their windows, they will appear in the same tab as their group. If they don't open there, then you can just simply drag and drop inside that. How big you want this top left section to be depends on your personal preference, but I'd like to keep it pretty small. If at any point you want more windows in this group, then using the ribbon setup, drag more icons on this. The purpose of these closable side interfaces is that you can click and open and close them at any point you want. Now that you've gone all the core features out of the way, don't forget to save a copy of your interface into whatever custom you want. Well, I'm saving this in custom interface too. And finally, the last section I'll talk about is the other supporting UI. You know how on screen there are other supporting interfaces that you can't click on, right? Well, in order to move them, you'll hit edit layout mode, then click the advanced options button. There are several options you can pick from, but let's go by the default checkbox ones and drag them accordingly. I like to drag my buff bar above the action bar, and then the debuff bar right beside this. These are really important display windows for when it comes to PVMing, as I like to keep them close by, so that way you get to see what your overload timers and such are, and the adrenaline potion cooldown timer, etc. In case you're wondering how do you remove the XP icon, that can be done by checkboxing the area status, and you can move it to wherever you want. Finally, save the custom interface preset as the exact same preset you've used for when it comes to building this interface. In my case, because I saved it to custom 2, I'm gonna save this to custom 2. So now we have reached to the end of this video. If you were to use a larger screen or the full 1080p resolution, then it will allow you to display more side windows. Some PVMers like to have their ability tabs displayed for all combat styles open at all times. Now obviously this is a personal preference for interface, as personally for me, it works pretty well. You can definitely add in more windows if you want here and there, but
but for now, I'm not going to overwhelm you with further information. Last but not least, although I have a lot of keybinds on my action bars and my secondaries, this is not a guide on keybinds, unfortunately. However, I do hope to do a complete guide on keybinds in the future, so be on the lookout for this. Keybinds really are more subject to personal opinions, so just choose whatever you're more comfortable with. The same can be said for what you put on the additional action bars, but I like to put things like prayers, defensive abilities, sigils, item switches, or pretty much anything where you would use in more than one combat style. Not gonna lie, there was a lot of stuttering in this video as I had trouble getting my words and thoughts together, but either way, I hope you have a general idea on how to build a decent PVM interface. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, because I will do more beginner PVM guides in the future.